guys, the GUI in RHEL 8 is powered by GNOME 3, and it's a great interface when you're making use of Linux as a workstation. So let me take you on a bit of a tour. So I've already logged in over here, and uh, you can see that we have activities at the top left. When you click on activities, you can search for programs to run. Uh, you can click on all applications at the bottom left over here, and you can see where your applications are. You can see that it's categorized as well between frequently used applications, and then we also have all applications. On the left-hand side over here, you can also see that we have a bit of a dock. And what you could do is that you could drag the programs that you most frequently utilize onto the dock for easy access. And let me show you how to do that. So if you fancy that you're going to be using uh, Pigeon as the instant messenger program, you could uh, right-click, say Add to Favorites, and there we go. And you can reorder the pro programs uh, as you see fit. Uh, Rhythm Box, yeah, I like listening to music. Let's go and add that to the favorites as well. And to the top you go. And of course, a mail program, a mail client. Now, we have Evolution over here as a mail client, so let's go and right-click that. And we're going to add that to the favorites. And we're going to also drag that all the way to the very top over here, because email is very important to me. So again, guys, instead of you having to uh, type to search for a pr particular program, uh, like files over here, I mean, no one wants to do that, especially if you're using a program very frequently. Add it to your favorites. Add it to the dock on the left-hand side. Now, something else that I really uh, appreciate uh, using GNOME 3 is the usage of, of the notifications. So you want to be notified of important events. You want to be notified about uh, emails and messages, messages that you have. At the top of a year where you see the date and the time, let's go ahead and click on that. And you can see that I don't have any notifications at the moment. Also, this is where you would go to access your calendar. So you could add events, you could modify events, and so forth. To the top right we go, you can see some information about networking. So that icon over there is what you would use to uh, typically connect to another network, especially wireless networks. You can see that I'm currently logged in as the student user. If you're listening to music, want to make it a bit louder, increase the volume. You could use the uh, sound option over here. And then little things like uh, if you click on the user itself, you could log out. Uh, I'm going to show you how to lock your screen as well in a moment. Um, you could change your account settings, like changing your password. That's something important to be mindful of. Of course, when you're going to be stepping away for a bit of a bio break, or uh, you're going to be leaving your computer, you don't necessarily want to log out, and then when you return, log back in again. So what we, uh, what we typically do is lock our screens. And you can click on that lock over there. Done. Now, how do you get back in? You can click and you can move your mouse, you can hit any key. It will now reveal the unlock screen, and I'm going to type in my password, and there you go. Nice and easy. Further to that, if I needed to shut down or restart the system, this is where you would click on the power off button over here. And now you're presented with options. Do you want to restart or do you want to power off the machine? I'm just going to go ahead and hit cancel. So one thing I really like about the GNOME interface is the use of different workspaces. And this is especially useful if you don't have multiple monitors. So you're looking at my desktop over here. You can see all this clutter. I've got all kinds of programs that are running right now. And you want a better way to organize uh, your work, your workspace. And this is where the workspaces feature come in. So to access your workspaces, go to activities on the top left hand side. Click on one of your programs. Click on one of the windows. Click and drag it across. So let's go and click on uh, Evolution. And we're going to drag it all the way across over here to a blank workspace. There's always going to be one blank workspace. And we can now go and drop it. And you'll see that as soon as I've occupied one blank workspace, another blank workspace is automatically going to be created. And what I could do now is that I could go to that workspace just by clicking on it. And you can see, here's my email. I can now go and work on my email. Now, to return to the first workspace, all that I now do is go to uh, Activities, all the way to the right-hand side again, and there we go. We'd also have uh, shortcut keys that you can make use of that would uh, expedite the changing of different workspaces. More about that a bit later on. So let's go and create one more workspace. So over here, we have uh, the terminal that I'm using right now. I'm going to drag it all the way to a blank workspace. And you'll see that uh, another workspace is automatically created. And now I can go and uh, sort of work on my terminal. I could go and do a bit of work on code, execute some commands. I want to go to another workspace right now. Uh, I could make use of the keyboard shortcut, Control Alt, and then the up arrow. And I've now gone up one workspace. Let's go and do that again. Control Alt, up one arrow, and I'm back to the initial workspace where I was originally working. And right now, my, uh, my first workspace, the one that I initially uh, had when I logged in, is less cluttered. And of course, if I needed to take my music and move it elsewhere, well, you know exactly how to do that right now. So again, top left in corner, go to Activities, choose the program, drag it all the way to the right-hand side, and drop it. Let go of it over there. And you can see right now, I've got three workspaces that are currently in use. I have a fourth one that is vacant. It's waiting for me uh, to go and add programs to it. 
Now, one of the best ways to learn Linux is to use it as your workstation to do everyday tasks. And the GUI allows you to accomplish just that. So my recommendation, get your hands dirty with the graphical user interface.